A new documentary takes a unique look at race in America. The HBO film called 1000% Me, Growing Up Mixed, features interviews with 11 kids ages 7 to 16. It's directed and produced by W. Kamau Bell, an Emmy-winning host and comedian. That's just a couple of things that he does. Yes. He spoke with two of his daughters and other kids in their San Francisco Bay Area community. Here's a clip of him interviewing his 10-year-old daughter, Sammy, as well as 11-year-old Miles and 7-year-old Sumeos. Take a look. When you look in the mirror, what do you see? I like to think that mirrors don't show everything. Like, mirrors show the outside of you, but the, they can't tell, like, the inside of you or how you identify, like, just by the look of you. And if I asked you, what ingredients make a Miles, what are the ingredients that make you Um, ingredients are family, friends, happiness, thoughtfulness, lots of emotion. <laughs> Black, Asian, and love. And a llama and a corgi. <laughs> Kamal Bell joins us right now. That. Good morning. How you doing? I'm doing great. I'm here with y'all. Look at this. I yes. made it. I'm We're glad with you're Gail here. King. We're glad How about you're that? Here. Things We're have so been worse. I, I love the uh, sweater, by the way. Uh, not all mac and cheeses are created equal. And mahogany. Nate, that's true. That is true. <laughs> I got it's mahogany. Mommy's a black woman-owned T-shirt company. Okay. It's great. No doubt about it. Um, so you have made documentaries before, uh, but you don't really interview children. They can be the most brutally honest creatures on the planet. Yes. What did you learn? You know, making a doc about mixed kids, I have three mixed daughters in my house. You saw Sammy right there. What I learned is that this younger generation of mixed kids don't think of themselves as being like half this and half that. They think of it as being like, I'm 100% this and 100% that. They don't mm. think of it as being like bifurcated or fractions. They think of it as like more toppings on the pizza. Is that where the 1,000% me comes from? Yeah, Miles, who we see in that clip earlier, says I'm 100% African American, 100% Filipino, and 1,000% a person. And I love that when he said it. Yeah. I, that was something that really stood out to me. This is the thing about all these children. Number one, they were all so powerful, all so strong. But one of the th conversations that really got to me was Mila. Mila was talking about uh, being biracial, and you asked her about, should we be having these conversations about race, and what did she say? Uh, she said, I said, what do you, do you, some people say kids can't handle these conversations. Yes. I said, absolutely, you should teach kids about race and racism, because it's better to learn that stuff early than it is to learn when you're an adult. And she said it's better to teach it to them when they're young. Yeah, better but to teach But the thing them. that got me in that scene, she's sitting in between her mom and her dad, the look on her dad's, what's his name, the dad's name? Brian. 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 The way he was looking at his daughter, because it's not like he was egging her on. No. Right. She was just speaking, she's 10, she was just yeah. speaking from her heart about yeah. that. No, I mean, I, a lot of this is like you see the parents, here. there's these proud parent moments where, and I say it at the end, our job is to like set these kids up and get out of the way. In yeah. that moment, Brian was like, I'm a good dad. No, <laughs> but the other thing you did was, you said some couple, you also talked to a lot of parents. Mm -hmm. Some parents talk about, um, being mixed race about the children they're going to be raising ahead of time. Others do not. Yeah. How did you and your wife navigate that conversation? I mean, me and Melissa, we've been together 20 years. We had Sammy like a, like eight years into our relationship. So we had spent a lot of time talking about race and racism. And we live in the Bay Area, so we're surrounded by mixed kids. And we knew that Sammy was going to have an identity, identity different than us. So we prepared. Melissa learned how to do black hair. She took classes and went online and did stuff. So it was about like understanding this kid was going to be different than us and preparing for it so we could envelop her. I mean, to Gail's point, not all parents take it on in that way. So yeah. having done this documentary, you haven't talked to parents about it. What is your advice generally to parents out there? Understand that having a mixed race kid means you're going to have a kid who has an identity that is not related to you. So you should do everything you can to support all sides of that kid's identity. I think some parents don't think about that. They just think, I'm having my child. Should but they think about it? I think they should because you find out a lot of mixed, I've heard from a lot of mixed race adults who felt like they were cut off from a side of their race because maybe that parent wasn't around right. or that parent didn't push their culture. So right. I think a lot of mixed kids want to engage with all sides of what their identity is. You had an older guy, I think his name was Roy. He yeah. said, I may be mixed, but I'm not mixed up. Yeah, Roy. I, was, I thought yeah. that was such a great line. But the other thing I thought was interesting, you took your mom and Melissa's mom I don't know if they get along, they don't get along. But it was a very interesting, awkward, I thought, awkward shot where they're sitting on the couch. Your mom talks about race. Yeah. Her mom did not. 
No, they they are friendly because they're grandmothers, but they're not friends. And certainly Melissa's mom is not having race conversations yeah. regularly unless I'm around. So oh. mm. it was really I, the fact that Melissa's mom would do that. I understood she was doing it for her granddaughters. If this is important for my granddaughters, she's like an ultimate grandma. I will sit here and fee, and, <laughs> and lean into this awkward conversation about race with my mom who comes with her knives all the time. But I thought it was Super powerful, though, though, to, to the dynamic between the two of them and what they both shared. Yeah, and it was also, I mean, a lot of times in my work, there's things I do that are almost more for me than for the film. Ah. I wanted to hear what that conversation would be, and I was really honored by the fact, I didn't think my mother-in-law would do it, but she yeah. showed up. Yeah. You've said on stage, um, you've said in interviews time and time again, and you just said it right now, it just comes out naturally, you lean in yes. to these awkward conversations. Yeah. Yeah. What is it about you that almost craves these moments? <laughs> I don't know no better. You know, I just, I just, I get curious about things. And, the th and I, so I'm curious about all sorts of things. Yeah. But conversations and things people don't want to talk about, I just get excited about trying to figure out a way to talk about them. But Kamau, mm. a lot of people want to leave, lean out of these conversations. And in schools today, a lot of parents' organizations and then a lot of school districts are saying, you know, we're not going to talk about right. it as much. Right. What advice do you have, based on your experience with this documentary, about what schools should be doing That's a good question. race? When does it ever help to not talk about a problem? Yeah. When does it ever help to not talk about things and learn things? Uh, I think this film, we were making it at the same time there's the anti-woke, anti-CRT stuff, and it very effortlessly addresses the fact that kids can handle this information, mm. they can talk about it, they want and these kids have the conflict in their DNA sometimes. Yeah, they want this They want it, and they're not overwhelmed not, by it. It's, it's not about being less, it's about being more. You know, the other thing I liked, I don't know if it was deliberate, it's only an hour. I actually think, oh, to your deliberate. point, Tony, yeah. Yeah. it should be required viewing in all schools, certainly among mixed race, but I think all of us could benefit from it. It gives you time to digest it's and so then well talk done. about it. have a guided conversation they, about it's it. It's so well done. I can't say enough about that. But it was deliberately an hour? Yeah, because I'm a parent, and I wanted it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know how kids tap out unless something's exploding or magical. So, yeah, I wanted, I wanted families to be able to watch it and have the conversation. That's great. Well, we appreciate you. Thank Give you. yourself a round of no applause. No doubt about right. it. Gail <laughs> King says. <laughs> Gail King Give says. Yourself a round. Even though some of your work might seem self-serving, it, it is serving us as a nation, and we appreciate you. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. I, all right, uh, do you think Bell. his work is self-serving? Well, he's, he says it. He says a lot of I thought work. I was catching it straight too, Gail. But no, no, no. <laughs> self-serving in the sense that you're okay. trying to okay. Okay. Come on, Gail, I'm trying to do my job. Halfway through, halfway through I got it. But at first, I was like, hey, wait a minute, brother. Do you <laughs> he he liked the symmetry of it. Brother, why are you going to do that to me? One thousand. I was just trying to give you an opportunity to Thank you, Gail. Clean it up. Growing up, Nick. You're welcome. Thank you, Gail. It's streaming now on HBO Max. Check it out. Come on.